and today we're going to be talking about solving quadratic equations by graphing. There's some key vocab here. A zero of a function is a value of x that makes the output equal zero. So meaning that the function value equals zero. These zeros are the x-intercepts because if you think about it, your x-intercepts are when y equals zero. Quadratic functions can have two zeros like I have shown here. And these zeros are always symmetric across our axis of symmetry. Because remember the axis of symmetry, the distance, the amount of x's from any point on the quadratic is the same to the left as it is to the right. The solutions to the quadratic equation are called roots. So really, x-intercepts, zeros, and roots are essentially all the same thing. Just remember that a quadratic function is a function where we have f of x equals something versus a quadratic equation where we don't have that y or that f of x. It's just solving a quadratic. Okay, find this by graphing. So, find the vertex. So we do our negative b over 2a. So our vertex is negative 3 to find the y-coordinate. Remember, this is really f of x, so I find f of negative 3, so I have a 9 minus 18 plus 8, so that's going to equal 1. So, set up your chart. In the middle value, I'm going to have five values for you. In the middle one, put your vertex, because we're symmetric across this vertex, or the axis of symmetry. Actually, that's a negative one. I apologize. So now put that value down. Then what we can do is find numbers less than negative 3 and find numbers greater than negative 3. So numbers greater are negative 2, negative 1. Numbers less are negative 4, negative 5. So find negative 2 negative 2 and negative 4 are going to be symmetric because they're the same distance away from 3. And negative 1 and 5 are going to be symmetric or the same y values. So really I don't have to do a whole lot of work. I have to find f of negative 2. That's going to be the same as f of negative 4. So doing that I find 4 minus 12 plus 8 that value is equal to zero because negative two is the same distance away from three as negative four is. We're symmetric. So I'm going to put those two points down. And then I'm going to find f of negative one. Now notice how I chose the numbers that were a little bit smaller. I didn't want to have to square negative five and do all that math. So those values are equal to 3. So I plot those points. So now again, remember, we're solving. Where are our x-intercepts? Or what values made our y to be 0? So our two solutions are negative 4 and negative 2. OK, solutions to a quadratic equation. And yes, I want you to draw this picture out. You can have one real solution. 
if your vertex is sitting on that x-axis. You can have two solutions if your graph hits your x-axis twice. And then you can have no real solutions if your entire graph is above the x-axis. Or if your entire graph and you open down is below the x-axis. So those are your other options. Okay, solve this by graphing. First get it so that it's set equal to zero. Find your vertex, negative b over 2a. That vertex value goes in the middle value. I now need to find f of 2, so that's equal to 4 minus 8 plus 4, that equals 0. Now let's find numbers a little bit less than 2 and numbers a little bit more. Again, remembering this middle point, that's my vertex. I'm symmetric. 3 and 1 are going to have the same y value because we're symmetric. 4 and 0 are going to have the same y value. So make your life easy. Find f of 0. f of 0 is equal to 4 because that's the c value. So I plot those two points. And then find f of 1. f of 1 should be fairly easy to find. 1 minus 4 plus 4. That's going to be equal to 1. So I plot those points. And again, remember, we're symmetric. So now, this is what our graph looks like. Remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to find the solution. Our solution is x equals 2. Our vertex was on our x-axis. So that's the only solution. It's what we call a double root. Because quadratics have two solutions, because our graph only hits once, it's called a double root when that happens. Our next example, solve this by graphing. If exact roots cannot be found, state the consecutive integers between which the roots are located. Okay, so first we find our vertex, negative b over 2a. Don't forget the negative sign that's with it. So that ends up being 2. Make your table of values. 2 is in the middle. Do numbers a little bit less and numbers a little bit more. Remembering that that's my vertex. So when I plug in 2, we have a negative 2 squared plus a 4 times a 2 minus a 1. Negative 2 squared is, neg is 4, but then I have the negative outside, so that's negative 4 plus 8 minus 1. So our y value out for our vertex is negative 3. I apologize, positive 3. All right, so graphing this guy, we have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Put your vertex down. We know we're going to open down because the a is negative. All right, let's find f of 0. I'm going to plug in 0 there for x. We have negative 1. And 4 is going to have that same value. Um, and then when I plug in 1, I have a negative 1 squared plus a 4 times a 1 minus a 1. So that's negative 1 plus 4 minus 1. 
So that's going to be a positive 2. So this is an idea of what our graph looks like. Now from my chart of values, you see from between 0 and 1, between 0 and 1, we cross the x-axis because our graph went from a negative value to a positive value. So I know that we are one of the zeros is between 0 and 1, and 1 of the zeros is between Where does it change signs again? Here at positive 3, I'm at positive 2, then at 4, I'm at negative 1. So we have to cross the x-axis because I go from a positive to a negative. So that's between 3 and 4. Okay, our next example. The highest bridge in the United States is the Royal Gorge Bridge in Colorado. The deck of the bridge is 1,053 feet above the river below. Suppose a marble is dropped over a railing from a height of three feet above the bridge deck. That's key. How long will it take for the marble to reach the surface of the water, assuming there is no air resistance? Now they give us a formula. This is a formula that you're gonna learn a lot about in physics. I wouldn't expect you guys to know this formula. I would always give this to you. So we're going to use the formula where T is time and H sub zero is the initial height above the water. So H of T is equal to negative 16 T squared plus H of zero. What's my initial height? Our bridge deck is 1,053 feet above, but also we're get, we have to add three feet to that because it's not like it's sitting right at the edge of the bridge deck. We're standing three feet above. So we're, our initial height is 1,056. Now I need to find how long, how long that's time Will it take the marble to reach the surface of the water? Remember, this formula is standing for something's height above the water. So something's height above the water when it reaches the water is zero. So now I need to solve this. Okay, to solve this, we're going to utilize our calculators. So I'm going to go to my calculator. In y equals, I'm going to put in that function that we just had. Remember, your negative sign is down next to the decimal point, 16x squared. Realizing, yes, I know that our calculator is using t, but t and x, it's just a different variable. It's fine plus 1056. Now we need to adjust the window because think about it. Our y-intercept is 1056 and our graph opens down. So on our window, we don't need negative time. So we can start our x's at zero. Y max, let's make sure 10. I think we'll be okay with 10. X scale. Now y min, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to have a negative height so we can start at zero, but our y max, the maximum that we have, where vertex, the y-intercept I should say, was 1,056, so let's say it's like 2,000. Let's have our scale go by 500. 
let's press graph and see what our graph looks like. I'm looking for this zero here. Your calculator can help you find these zeros. So if you go to second, trace, that's that calculate menu. We're looking for the zero, number two. What left bound means? It means numbers a little bit less than what our actual value is. You see how my cursor, I'm looking for the zero, my cursor is to the left, so I can just press enter. Now it says right bound. Arrow over so that your cursor is to the right of it, of your zero. So notice how, it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but notice how right, now I'm negative. I started, I had a positive, now I'm going to a negative, so I know I'm going to find my zero. Press enter. Guess doesn't matter. So we found our zero to be 8.12. So our time t is going to be the value we found in our calculator. t equals 8.12. One, two, now units, T is in seconds. Okay, our lesson question. We're going to solve this equation by graphing, and it's a multiple choice that you guys are going to solve for me.